Hi everyone. In order to continue with the presentation, now I'm going to explain you how rising intonation is used when we refer to some alternatives. Rising intonation is used for all alternatives in a sentence, but the last, the last alternative is given the rising falling intonation or partner. So we are going to analyze and the following statement. In the first statement we have, you can say it in writing or orally. As you can see here, we have two alternatives, writing or orally. So now we are going to analyze the intonation pattern. We can notice here that in the first sentence, the intonation pattern starts from tone number two and rises to tone number three. I mean, and it ends there. But in the second alternative, the intonation pattern starts in tone number two it rises to tone number three, but then it falls to tone number one. You can say it in writing or orally. Notice here, the rising intonation is for the first alternative, but in the last, the last alternative, it's given the rising falling pattern. Let's check the second sentence. In the second sentence we have, we eat at the drugstore, a cafeteria, or a restaurant. You can see here that, he, that we have three alternatives, drugstore, cafeteria, and a restaurant. So now we are going to analyze the rising intonation pattern. We eat at the drugstore. A cafeteria or a restaurant. Notice here the rising intonation is given to the, the, the first and the second alternative, but in the third alternative or in the last one is given the, the rising falling pattern. So here we have at tone number two, it rises to tone number three, and it ends there. The same in the second alternative, at the start, in tone number two, it rises to tone number three, and it ends there. But in the last part, in the last alternative, at the start from tone number two, it rises to tone number three, and it falls in tone number one. Now, we are going to analyze the rising intonation in questions. In questions which don't begin with an interrogative word. As you can see here, we have two questions. Will you have sugar or lemon? These questions also have two alternatives, sugar or lemon. Now we are going to analyze the intonation pattern. Will you have sugar or lemon? As you can see here, the intonation pattern Start from tone number two, it rises to tone number three, and it ends there. In the first alternative. But in the second alternative, the intonation pattern starts from tone number two, it rises to tone number three, and then it falls to tone number one. Will you have sugar or lemon? 
Finally, we have the second question. Do you drive a Ford or a Chevrolet? So, we are going to analyze the intonation pattern. Do you drive a Ford or a Chevrolet? As you can see here, the intonation pattern starts from tone number two, it rises to tone number three, and it ends there in the first alternative. But in the second alternative, it does start from tone number two, it rises to tone number three, and finally it falls to tone number one. Do you drive a Ford or a Chevrolet? Remember, the correct pronunciation of the last word is Chevrolet. Okay, that's all for my presentation. This was the rising intonation applied in sentences with alternatives and also with questions with alternatives. Thank you so much.